Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today about Make Your Data Work For You with Azure Data Catalog. Um, we really appreciate your precious time and we hope that you learned some valuable insights today. Um, before we get started, just wanted to share some housekeeping things with everyone. If you have questions, please submit them in the GoToWebinar portal and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. Um, and at the end of this webinar, you will also receive an email with a PowerPoint uh, from this presentation. And now that we've covered those topics, let's go ahead and kick things off. I will introduce you to our presenter today. Our presenter today is Srinivasa Jalu. Srini is a Enterprise and Data Analytics Director here at CompuNell Digital. And he has over 18 years of experience in software development, big data design, data analytics, data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, and many other technologies. And he has led data projects for several Fortune 500 companies, and his expertise in the data space is really second to none. He has a really broad depth of experience working offshore um, and with remote teams. So he's uniquely qualified to help organizations right now as they navigate this new normal Normal, um, novel economy and just brings a lot to the table so I'm very excited to hear what he has to share with us today so without any further ado I will hand it over to Srini uh, hi Rachel uh, thanks for introducing me uh, hi everyone good morning so thanks for joining this uh, webinar so as um, Rachel introducing about me, I'm Srini and uh, I'm a director and I'm working for Enterprise Data Insights practice within Compunel. So with that, uh, let's move to the actual agenda for today. So hope you're all excited and uh, you know waiting for this eagerly. So today agenda is you know so categorize the data challenges, especially at the time of you know COVID-19 situation and. Um, Companies and uh, you know, organizations of the all sort of scale, maybe the mid level and uh, uh, higher level or mid size, all sorts of companies having certain data challenges. We will see what kind of data challenges and we categorize it some of the data challenges by looking at you also can remind your uh, challenges and you can like uh, align with our the challenges mentioned here. And then we will move to the uh, what is data catalog actually you know majority of the people knows it but some people doesn't know about it let's discuss about it what is it all for the uh, meant for you and for the organizations and different types of data catalog users you know so who are all the users for this we are the consumers or who are all the people that interacting with this data catalog within the organizations we will see and then annotation with the azure data catalog you know so today i'm going to show Azure Data Catalog, this um, uh, uh, webinar is uh, divided into three parts. The first part is the background and um, uh, um, things around this uh, uh, technology and then the live demo with Azure Data Catalog tool, uh, it's Azure platform on cloud. And then we go ahead with the questionnaires and uh, with that, right? So whatever the questions you ask us, we will answer that, you know? So without, uh, um, wasting much time you know let's move to the topic so recognized any of these challenges you know so these are the challenges some of the challenges we identified uh, during these times you know the critical situation right now everything is going um remote and the people are connecting remotely and you know they're exchanging the data and the thoughts and ideas and work status everything on remote you know so maybe you also can observe some of the challenges that i mentioned here users spend more time looking for data than they do analyzing it than they do analyzing it that means the business users or the end users they're uh, looking for the data only you know where it is how it is uh, rather than they analyzing it you know so, so uh, as they're supposed to analyze more time than looking and waiting and um, identifying the way to get the data and data is sitting in multiple sources you know if any of the organizations if you take in care um if you come from you know so there are a lot many uh, data sources you know it could be a erp our um, uh, uh, maybe hrms is used on the erp and finance system is uh, an sap system on the different application and our salesforce um, crm is on somewhere else and maybe our sales and marketing channels are driving through some other technologies and platforms we never know you know so these are all the different uh, technologies and platforms across the um 
organization so that data beyond it will be scattered across the organization data sitting in multiple sources but no insight into which data sits where you know so that's what the one of the concern many different uh, data ecosystems across the enterprise but no way to share the data artifacts across them you know if you look any organization many different data ecosystems not the single platform as i mentioned each and every function or the lob line of business will uh, use their own set of tools and technologies you know so um, in that situation it's very difficult to share the data artifacts across them and the need to consumption in multiple different tools but no common way of enabling discovery and access the data sources across them now this is one more problem users are busy reproducing data assets that already exist because they don't know is this particular uh, data asset is already available with me or if available where it is and you know so for example we are dealing with the customer data customer data can come from the erp from the salesforce crm some other kind of uh, crms maybe some other channels maybe some you know our marketing channels sales channels or any kind of lob is also dealing with the customer everybody will have their own set of data for the customers but they don't know that you know this much duplicate of uh, information is available and scattered across the organization this is one more challenge we identified and no way of tracking usage of bi and analytics assets you know for example in our company if you have a bi and analytics uh, uh, assets right so how the particular calculation how the report was built in background you know so how the particular calculation happened and derived it from which columns and what are the background data sets nobody aware and you know these are all the different challenges at a high level we identified hopefully you also might have observed these challenges in your organization so to solve them you know we identified a solution called azure data catalog and first of all we will see what is data catalog and then we will talk about what is azure data catalog so the data catalog is a metadata repository that allow users you know to register enrich understand and discover and consume the data sources that means what you know we have lot many data assets and data sources across the organization um, but there is no common place for them to pull their metadata um, um, in one into one place you know so uh, to identify what are there uh, in that uh, data assets you know the data sources in that applications so our metadata uh, this data catalog will enable us and help us to register such kind of data assets and pull that data uh, data assets not the actual data maybe sampling data can be possible and um, we can enrich it understand better of the uh, uh, data data sets and we can discover and consume the data sources so this is the data catalog and what else we can do you know it's a enterprise wide you know what is azure data catalog is it's an enterprise wide catalog in azure platform that enables self service discovery of the data from any source so this is one beautiful feature given by uh, microsoft azure uh, just like you might have heard about the term self service bi or self service analytics just like that it's a self service discovery platform okay so anybody can uh, use this platform and uh, uh, register the data sets and they can pull it they can enrich and enhance it and discover it and understand that uh, particular data so what is there and where it is and for example if i have a customer uh, data set uh, within crm where else it is existed again so what is the difference between the customer data in crm as well as within erp in between these two or else in some other sales application or some other marketing application or some other other uh, lob uh, level uh, information and so we can compare this kind of uh, 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 data sets in in a single platform so what can you do with it you might have curious right so i am attending uh, uh, this uh, webinar uh, being a person within an organization what i can do you know we are all the users of this uh, data cataloging solution uh, any can anybody can be the part of this solution uh, it could be a publisher or a consumer or it admin based on the uh, uh, the role we categorized into this uh, three parts but end of the day it could be anyone from your organization can be part of this data uh, catalog solution and they can um, use this one publisher publisher means most of the uh, time it's a developers or maybe the it enablers right so they can um, register this uh, data assets and publish them 
and uh, further they will enrich it you know they will categorize uh, they will keep it uh, some uh, uh, enhance some annotations so these kind of things and the consumers you know the development team maybe technical stewards can do this job as a publisher job but who is going to consume it right so end users so what they will do maybe a data um, a stewards or the end users or the business users are, are maybe owners of any particular application they can come and consume this one you know uh, they will discover they will browse and they can search certain data sets they can understand it so get a context and identify um, intent about the data and data assets okay and then uh, it admins you know so it admins and administrator infrastructure team they will involve in uh, govern governance body and they apply apply policies and then control catalog access part you know so this is so important thing to control the access part and analyze it you know the uh, this uh, team will uh, do uh, certain activities like that so annotation i will uh, explain it while i give the live demo using the uh, like azure data catalog but just for now just try to understand what is these terms you know i mentioned here annotation annotation is nothing but whenever you are dealing with a data set you are pulling a data set into your catalog you will assign one by one you know whatever the properties that has the particular data set will come automatically but apart from that you know so they during this annotation uh, phase we will apply certain you know we we create certain tags we can add certain expert so that we can assign a responsibility or accountability to a particular person to enhance it further and to take care of the accessibility and you know uh, information and we can document about this data set we can uh, describe about the data sets you know the data sets and the tables and the different objects or artifacts within that uh, data asset this is nothing but annotation this can be done through our data cataloging but how we can do it and uh, and all we can see once we move to the uh, live demo so and you know there are uh, uh, within azure data catalog there are two kinds of uh, editions one is data catalog free edition and then uh, paid edition you know a free edition we can do most of the stuff but there is certain limitations and the paid edition uh, we can do a little more uh, features and enhanced things so in free edition what we can do uh, we can experience azure ca data catalog service full end to end experience we have except certain features we can allow any user to register enrich and understand discover and basic uh, things that we can do within the data catalog we can do we can allow the people here and it's free edition is a open system so where any asset registered is visible to everyone the security problem is there with the free edition because in your organization any of the registered user or maybe a, a, a can come and uh, see this data assets so with the paid edition we can restrict the access part and enable as, enable asset level authorization also possible allow uh, users to take a ownership of registered data assets for greater control we can assign certain users to take care particular uh, data assets you know we can uh, do this one and glossary support also available within uh, data catalog what is glossary means it is full uh, set of you know the rules and regulations and uh, vibrations and uh, vocabulary about the data this kind of stuff you know the paid edition is governed system in a way you know providing central control and it oversight so uh, so if you have that control you know the glossary feature this kind of for example facility is there facility nothing but in hospital for somewhere a location can be some some place maybe an entity for someone <clears throat> okay so it can be anything so to define further for example facility into different different entities we need to have a feature to enable azure in a data azure data catalog uh, feature called glossary it comes with paid ed edition only so we can create api i will uh, let you know about this api and all in later part so before going to the demo i will explain you to set up azure data catalog what are all the prerequisites right what are all the prerequisites you need who can do this okay so 
what kind of people can use this one how easily we can set up this one let us see in a live demo right now so the people anybody with a minimum knowledge on technology or else without having any technical skills like a business users uh, business analysts maybe end users any of the it heads anybody can do this one within a simple steps right now i'm going to show you the um, prerequisites and uh, setting up this tool and uh, registering one of the data sets for our demo purpose so so before going the actual demo i'm going to show you what are all the prerequisites i um, set up uh, for, for now so if you look at i created a data a database in my local machine in my server so why i need this database for example in your organization case you might have 100 of database applications maybe fewer uh, um, fewer uh, data sources or the you know like erp system and again within erp multiple erp systems can be possible in bigger organization and you know your hrms can be uh, sitting on your oracle apps maybe your uh, finance system can be sitting on your sap maybe your uh, 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 inventory application can be something else you know so like that you know uh, maybe your crm application can be salesforce or maybe dynamic crm it could be anything so in your case there are multiple applications will be there but for this uh, demo purpose i created a single database that is called bike store it will it will have a particular uh, uh, sales data uh, it will hold certain products uh, certain brands uh, categories and stocks and customers order items order details this kind of information will be there just to uh, show you what is this you know i'm just querying this data okay this kind of data will be there maybe i can show you certain products information here okay so you can see this data so what i'm going to do i am going to import this data set into our azure data catalog okay so in order to go ahead and do that azure data catalog so what are all the other things that we need to take care of before we go there so i will show that one okay so we need to have a sorry so we need to have a um, azure account you know so this is my azure account this is company sponsored maybe in your organization also you will have one uh, one user within the company sponsor or within your organization you might have working in uh, it's not specifically required for this one you know you might have uh, this azure access for different purpose maybe you are using in a database you are managing a database asset maybe you are a dba or you are a, da a data warehousing expert you are dealing with azure uh, data warehouse applications or else you are a reporting person maybe you are an analytics person maybe you are infrastructure person so whoever you are you know based on your uh, uh, roles and responsibilities you might have the access to um, azure azure portal within that what are all the required you know uh, microsoft partner uh, this one is the subscription subscription is anyhow by default it will be there for your company and then a user group will be there and within that a data catalog this is more important till that it's common but what we do you know um if you look at it how to create a uh, data catalog i already created i'm not going to create anything but uh, just for the no uh, knowledge purpose you know um i'm sharing this information you also can know what it what it is and how to do that you know if you select this one if you click on create it's going to create a data catalog for us okay that's what i'm going to say in my case i already created a data catalog called I named it as a master data, but you can name it on your own, you know, any of the meaningful uh, name as per your company uh, requirement. I have today is the free edition. So the as I mentioned earlier, there are certain limitations for the free edition. Uh, but majority of the things we can do it, you know, so uh, number of users we can add it from here and all. So now if you click on here, you know, I'm going to if you click on this one you know there is one portal so if you click on here it will navigate me to the next portal next portal is this one you know this is the main one this is this is your uh, 
main one and this is the azure data catalog portal so up to here hope things are clear for you you need to have a database because we need to uh, get the data assets into the data catalog and of course you have your own azure portal uh, credentials and within that you should have a subscription and the resource group and then you are going to create a data catalog so after you creating the data catalog this is the place from uh, where you will uh, route it into okay so and then you know uh, so what you are going to do with it uh, i will open the deck and i will show you so first you know we need to register the data sources and then we need to discover annotate document everything we can do from there onwards uh, right now if you look at this one right we are at the same pace so we are at the same pace so what we do right now we can go ahead and uh, um, publish certain data to our data catalog when you click on the uh, uh, push data okay publish data so it will ask you through which method you're going to uh, publish this data either launch application or create manual entry so either of the application i am using the launch application when you are clicking on this one it will download a, a small tool called rag tool you know so this one the rag tool you might have seen this when you click on this and run this one it will um, it will uh, install a, a small software for you this is the software that um, and it will open a window for you uh, within that window again the same credentials what you are using for your uh, azure uh, azure web portal you have to enter so that it will uh, um, it will uh, take you here so in my case what is the data set i am going to register today my data set is the uh, sql server database i have certain sales data over here so i want to see that how to uh, get it and uh, so if you look at there are by default there are lot many sources uh, we can uh, integrate with this data catalog register into this data catalog out of which i selected a sql server and then click on next you know it's simple and you have to provide certain details here of your server in your case your dbs will provide but these details are with me in your in my local machine in my own server so i am giving that details my server name i gave windows authentication i am choosing or else you can choose server authentication also i am giving my username and i am providing my password here that's it you know if you click on uh, uh, connect it will ask you i have three sets of data uh, bases i can found in this uh, uh, database so which one you know which one do you want to move i am want to move bike store as i mentioned so you want all the tables within this all the objects within this are very few objects you can have your own choice you can select a couple of or else you can uh, select all so i am selecting all so and on top of it you know just do remember these two options i am explaining now include preview include data profile it is very beautiful features for uh, data stewards or the data analysts and uh, please make sure you just you take if you want so what it will do i will explain in the next slides you know so if you click this one you know what it can do i will explain later you know just that's it so please wait you know it will take maybe a uh, 5 minutes or less than 5 uh, minutes time please wait while we register the selected objects so it takes a little time so 2% and it will go beyond it very quickly maybe it takes 2 3 minutes that's it because our tables are very less so you can you can see the percentage here yeah it's 31 percentage so once this is done we will go and see uh, this objects this data set and this data elements or else this data uh, tables and whatever the objects that we are uh, registering and importing to enrich and enhance it further we can see in our data catalog uh, just bear with me for two more minutes uh, it is going to be done so that we can nine publish so if you click on view portal it will uh, go and take you to this one again you know i am already in that portal so that we don't have any issue if 
you want, you can uh, refresh it also. I already opened it. Or else the other way is if you click on uh, register more objects. For example, if you if you forget something or if you want to do register some more objects, you can do or else you can go simply go and click on view portal also fine. So now I'm going back to the portal. Just give me a moment. It, it's I think it's uh, it's refreshing. It takes a bit of time. Yeah, we are good now. So this is the starting uh, home page. So I'm going back to the deck, you know, so what we can do here, we can set something here and uh, we can see uh, uh, already existing that uh, data assets, recently used data assets. Uh, if, you use, if you use already uh, before, so that it will show all the recently used data assets and pinned assets, you can pin it also, how to pin it I will show. And saved searches also, you can save the search also. It's not like every day you come and you forgot and set something. It's not like that. You can go and set anything, you know. If you click on here, okay, it will show you, you know. So this is the, um, these are the data objects we imported just now. This is the SQL server, okay. This is the SQL server uh, database and uh, nine tables, one database. Left side, if you look at all the details, it can show you. Okay, now uh, we can click on any of the thing, you know, for example, uh, for example, orders, you know, I'm clicking on the orders. So if you if you come down uh, right side further, so you can add any friendly name, what you can do with it, I'm going to show you. Preview, you know, so I, I mentioned you in other, other slide, maybe a few minutes ago, you just rem remember, Preview and uh, data profiling. What is the preview means? So if you use the preview, it will give you a sample records, you know, sample records, that's it. Maybe it will fetch you seven records, eight records, or 10 records based on your requirement. So what, what is the helpful for the um, data analysts or the data stewards? They need not to log into the database and see, because sometimes they're not technical people. They cannot do all those headaches. Simply they can come here, you know, they want to see, for example, orders. Okay, so what order table, what, what are all the different uh, columns are there? Okay, discount. Discount, how is it? It's maybe the percentage one. List price, this is the price, you know, quantity. Quantity is the number, product, you know, product ID. In some places, product ID can be the uh, numeric, some, some places it's uh, alphanumeric or the alphabets, but here it is all numeric. Item ID, you know, item ID numbers also will be there. Just like that, we can see. And then, and the next next thing, we can go to the columns also. We can go to the columns also. Um, what it does, you know, so whatever the things are already available at database level, it will pull just like that. For example, if you want to enhance it better, so the description and all, so that it can be useful for anyone. For example, add ID, I want to give a description. This is this uh, this identifies this identifies uh, order number order number so that you know so what does it do it will save that information here so it's saved so that you know you can enhance it a bit further so that whenever the business analysts or the business people or the anyone they logged in and see this information they can understand better okay so it identifies the order number. So for example, product ID. This, this is the product number, which is unique again, which is unique. You can write anything, you know, which is unique so that, you know, it will save for us. So that can be done here. And then, you know, I told you data profiling. This is one more thing. In sometimes uh, data stewards will end up their life getting these insights from the database. For example, uh, this is my table. Okay, so this is the ad, uh, this is the orders table. So orders table, what is the uh, columns are there? In each column, what kind of null count zero? Okay, so maybe distinct values. Uh, 16, 15, uh, distinct values are there in order ID. It looks like all are the distinct. So just like that, minimum value and maximum value. For example, list price. List price is the minimum value 89.99 and the maximum value is this one. You know, if anybody wants to see the list price, um, 
they need not what is the minimum price of our product and maximum price of our products they can simply come and see here so this is the beauty of this one and finally there is one more advantage of this if you go ahead and see right you can document it you know you can write some documentation also this is the order table order table in uh, sales mart within sql server database anything blah 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 you can write anything and you can save it further you know it can save automatically for you you know once you got this tick mark green one that means it is saved so i am going back again so anything you know uh, anything you can see let's move to the deck again so we, we just now we searched and we we saw certain thing and uh, let's move to the next slide you know um, for example if some people you know some of the uh, data stewards or business people they come directly on this portal they want to search something and save that search okay we can save that one how to save uh, save that searches also i'm going to show you and apart from that pin assets we can pin certain assets so that um, uh, you, you need not to search for them and again and again you cannot uh, you need not to search anything so how to do that i'm going to show it again here you know for example it is not unpinned so i am pinning it you know so that means what whenever you come and log in this portal okay so whenever you are coming and uh, uh, logging this portal you can see that uh, information straight away so you can see in a different view also you can see like this also okay so these are the things and for example i am going to set something orders again i'm going back to the home and uh, maybe i'm setting here okay so this time i'm going to set something you know orders orders okay so what it is going to give let us see address information it gave so i'm going to give uh, search only i just uh, saved it you know so once the next day you come and see this one you need not to uh, go everywhere just come here okay just come here and you know directly you can uh, come and uh, click here you know your save, saved searches so i saved those two searches before okay so you can you can just go and click on that so that you know whatever the information you are looking at you can see that uh, just like that you know so i am going to do one more thing here so for example let us open one more time this one um, and you can unpin also this one if you don't want to pin it you know you can unpin also so so whatever the pin assets right just now order items i pinned it so in the main portal itself main uh, login page itself you can see based on your user my user i logged in with my user so all of my pin assets saved searches all of my assets what i am recently visited and working on everything can be seen on the main portal itself uh, and you know i want to show you one more thing you guys um, right now let us let us um, let us add something here what i want to add so for example expert for example um, if you want to give a user friendly name to this order items so bike order items you know i am giving just like that some name so that next time if you forget order you know bike order items either bike or order or item you can search somewhere in the main in the here you know in the search option you will get it description anything you know this will hold all the um, bike order details so this is the bike order details okay so you can you can this add this one so that you know if anybody come and log in and see this data object they can understand okay this is the order table uh, and um, this will hold all the bike order uh, details okay 
uh, and you know experts i can add certain expect also for example in our company there are a lot of uh, uh, experts would be there so out of which this order details i want to assign certain as expect so uh, just give me a moment I'm going to show you how to add it. For example, any of the any of the asset you can take it. Any of the asset you can take it. For example, let us take address only, address only, and then I want to add expert. I'm adding an expert here. So I'm adding an expert here uh, so that. Uh, that expert is expert is the responsible for for this particular person so i'm adding some name like prasad but that expert should be existed in the database you know then only it will allow us to add in our active directory it should be available then only it will allow so it is green tick mark means it is already added so this person will be responsible for orders data assets enrichment and you know enhancement further we can add certain tags also how the tags will be useful for example i will show you how to add the tags and what is the advantage of it um, if you add a tag right if you if you uh, forgot what is this data asset name is maybe the data object or the table name is so you can come and uh, Search with that also. You can you can come and search with that also. Order will will hold um, bike sales info. Any of the tags you can keep. Number of you can add um, you can add more also. It says um, sales sales data okay any of the tags you can you can add maybe bike orders so that in that way you can made our uh, business users life easy you know if they forget something simply they can search you know come here uh, i'm writing sales here i'm typing sales whatever the uh, whatever the objects that uh, um, match with that one that will give you here you know so this is one more advantage of the uh, tagging and let's move to the slide so that in this slide uh, we covered majority of the things and here i'm going to explain what are all the different things you can uh, different data assets you can uh, deal with this azure data catalog you can we are looking at the sql server right now but there is no limitation you can use the sql data warehouse on cloud analysis services reporting services oracle database mysql and azure blob hdfs hive teradata azure data lake it could be anything hana database or anything you know so supported data sources these are the other data sources can be supported but the limitation for this one you have to go ahead with the manual approach so i used the automated approach for sql server database but these databases will not supported for um, automated approach it's a manual approach only it supports so i, I have shown you uh, this also earlier you know we have seen the column names and the table name data profiling we covered and uh, friendly names also we gave certain friendly name and the descriptions tags you know you can see for example it's automotive business simply they can add automotive auto sales uh, data warehouse relational dw either cars vehicles bikes anything experts you can add n number of people or else one two people who are responsible for this particular data assets data profiling feature right it's most useful for the data stewards you know in particular uh, database within some tables how the data look like you know what is the metrics for example sale amount is there what is the minimum sale amount what is the maximum sale amount they need not to go and write any sql queries to get that if they can come and log in this space they can see all this information here itself okay asset documentation i have shown you how to do the documentation for example 
uh, you want to document certain aspects of certain data assets, you can come and log in and you know you can write all of your inputs over here about that particular data assets. Uh, you can do that um, entered via data catalog portal, just like I have shown I have shown right now. Okay, Re request access. For example, uh, you created 10 data assets. We just created one data uh, database, data source, and nine data assets. Maybe in real time, maybe 100 of data assets will be there. So if you want to control the access part and all, you have to unblock or block certain users. You know, so you have to restrict the uh, access part and all so that they can come they can use they uh, what they intended to be what they supposed to be you know so this is what i uh, explained here it's a contextual asset consumption you know so uh, users can open selected data assets in supported client applications they can pre-built connection strings you know so data set asset properties include complete connection information <coughs> for use in any client application so anything you know all these things are ready-madely available with azure data catalog earlier to implement this one it was taking months and months you know just now i have i have shown you how easily we can um, implement this one you know so very simple you should have certain database to identify which database to be export or maybe register and uh, enhance further uh, maybe um, understand further or uh, and then you should have a uh, portal for azure portal access so it's not specially required for azure data catalog you might have for particular other things you can use the same user but on azure data catalog certain permissions you required you need to ask and request your uh, administrators and then um, and then you know using this portal using this tool you know microsoft azure data catalog i downloaded and installed you can register and import the artifacts and finally uh, you are you are good and you will be on this space you know you will be on this space so with this whatever i planned for today i'm almost done so i will go for the questions you know so thank you all right thank you so much srini um i hope that everybody learned a lot and thank you all for joining us today. I know your time is precious in the middle of the week, so we really appreciate you being here. I'm going to go ahead and share some of the questions that have come in. Um, so the first question is, can we search using timestamp? Yeah, uh, if you uh, if you use in the uh, tags what I shown earlier, uh, certain timestamp or something, you can it can be possible. Yeah, hope okay. I answer your question. It's possible uh, for your answer. Yes, it is possible. Um, and the next question is, do you know when version 2.0 will be available? So we have to uh, we have to be touch base with uh, Microsoft for that. You know, uh, the regular uh, updates they will uh, send it to their partners, uh, Microsoft partners, or else Azure partners, so that we have to be touch base that. So everybody eagerly waiting for that one, yeah. So not quite sure yet from Microsoft yeah. side. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the next question is, what are the different data catalog tools available on the market? So on the market, you know, we have a couple of tools. You know, Informatica, of course, it was the leading tool uh, available in the market. Uh, majority of the um, high uh, the high budget uh, projects are else, you know. Um, a big companies, big organizations will go with that because it's a costly uh, tool and licensing part. And uh, apart from that, we have Pulibra tool. There is one more tool. There are uh, a number of tools, but along with that, you know, this data Azure data catalog also one of them. But the beauty and the uh, easiness with this tool is very easy to implement. I just implemented in front of you within just five to ten minutes. That's it. Uh, even any of the users, uh, maybe the end users, business users, any IT heads, anyone can come and they can uh, play with this data and they can understand better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, the next question we have is why do organizations need a data catalog and what customer challenges does it solve? Yeah, so the data catalog, as I mentioned earlier, it is a, like a centrally located uh, metadata repository or else a inventory 
which is going to organize entire your enterprise data assets uh, metadata into a single space um, it can be available across the organization for anyone and it can enrich you know it can enrich the uh, uh, dictionary data dictionary or the um, enrich the glossary and it can give a value addition to it so that anybody can for example a new um, business analyst joined our company he don't know where to search what is the certain um, meaning of certain terminology some technical terms or business terms he don't know in some of the industries understanding the vocabulary business vocabulary business terms is very very important for example if you can say finance we have to understand the finance terminology th thoroughly and um, maybe healthcare industry or any of the industries so for that one it is so useful and as i mentioned in the challenges right otherwise if we don't have this kind of data catalog uh, users will waste their most of their time uh, just um, identifying the right set of data than analyzing time and you know they don't know how to share uh, the information and where, if it is duplicate version of something or where is going to get the original version and uh, for example customer is there customer information is available in different data sets which data set is to be uh, prioritized uh, on which data set he can rely on more this kind of information he can get into so that it is so useful to take a good decisions uh, even for the uh, business uh, intelligence and analysts also it is so helpful while they deriving certain calculations until unless we don't know the business meaning of certain uh, certain data we cannot do anything we cannot take a better decisions so uh, it, it it solves all these kind of problems and challenges so that's the reason every organization should have uh, their own um, data catalog in place yeah thank you okay great um let's see our next question is can we do cognos tool in adf and als any of the reporting services right any of the reporting services uh, we can pull and that uh, use that uh, business glossary over here so that metadata can be supported over here under the reporting services option yeah and then a related question from the same um, attendee is azure data lake storage in cognos i'm not sure if he's asking yeah. if that's possible yeah to azure data catalog also it's possible it will support uh, this data catalog it could be uh, Azure Data Catalog, Azure Data Warehouse, any reporting services. If you have any Power BI kind of or a Cognos kind of reporting system, or else if you uh, have any big data, maybe unstructured data, and if you have any HANA kind of uh, you know uh, system, or uh, it, there's no limitation as such, you know. Uh, but uh, for for some applications, uh, we have a direct connectors, but some application uh, it's a manual entry. For some applications, we need to build our own APIs also. If you can capable of uh, creating your own API, it can. There is no limitation as such. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I Thank hope you. that answered your question. Um, and then this one is pretty related, but the next question is: What kind of data sources can we use and publish in data catalog? So uh, yeah, uh, this answer is same. You know, so there is no limitation as such. It could be any relational database or a data lake, uh, Azure Blob Stories. It could be any HANA system. It could be a file system. Of course, any uh, CSVs or the file system. Wherever your data is residing, majority of the applications are supported by Azure Data Catalog. We can register them and we can pull them and enrich them. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Our next question is. How can we do the um, Power BI data sets in Azure data, or excuse me, Azure on cloud? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, how can you do the Power BI data sets in Azure on cloud? Power BI data sets, okay. For example, if we have the Power BI data sets, okay, uh, on cloud, on cloud or else even on premise also, we can, we have certain connectors to pull that metadata into azure data catalog and we can uh, understand we can keep that metadata or data dictionary we can apply certain uh, business glossary technical glossary on top of it we can keep it in a better version within uh, azure um, data catalog yes for your answer uh, answer for your question is yes we can do 
uh, even with the uh, power bi data sets either from the on premise or else in azure side we can pull them into azure data catalog and enrich them better further okay great thank you um and the next question is what level or size of companies should have a data catalog it's very good question actually thanks for asking this uh, you know uh, rachel and uh, there is no limitation of the size you know any kind of company let it be a small size or a mid-range business or the big business all sort of companies uh, should have this one but even in um, even a small companies right still they can manage uh, most of the times what they will do these glossaries or this kind of metadata they will keep in excel sheets but after certain time if the business is growing and the backend databases are increasing and the number of tools and technologies or the platforms are increasing uh, rapidly in that case there is a challenge okay for a smaller organizations it is required but still they can manage with the excel sheets or any other alternate solution but mid range to the um, big organizations definitely we should have it okay so that uh, it is so friendly uh, um, uh, for the using this uh, information across the organization if anybody can um, log into that page anybody within the organization can see the metadata what is that uh, meaning for that you know what is the importance of it and what does it mean for him especially he can understand he can get very good insights out of it from there he can start and uh, do his work in a better way in a best uh, in a better way that's what thank you okay great thank you um, and then our last question is how to develop traditional data models on the cloud? Kind of a broad uh, question. Uh, sorry, can you can you repeat the question, please? Yep, how to develop traditional data models on the cloud? Traditional data models. You know, the traditional data models, right? For example, uh, if you build certain data models on your cloud-based uh, data, database, like SQL database, maybe, uh, synapse analytics we are called it as a synapse analytics right now um it is a azure based um a sql data warehouse or else you have a snowflake based or else you have a aws based uh databases you know so within that we we have to create first that data model there are a lot of techniques right there are a lot of techniques and methodologies available so in order to do that um, uh, that models once your data models are available, the data assets and database uh, available in the database, let it be a cloud or anywhere. And after that, we can pull that uh, uh, data models or the data assets into our Azure data catalog. We can re-enhance re it. We can give a meaningful information. We can uh, document it in a better way. We can enrich it and we can understand from there it's better way. So that's what, so thank you. Okay. I hope that answered the question. So I don't see any new questions coming in. So we can go ahead and wrap things up a little early here today. But thank you all so much for attending our webinar today on Azure Data Catalog and how it can help you manage your data, make your data work for you. I hope that you got some valuable insights out of our presentation today. And thank you very much, Srini, for joining us and sharing all of your expertise. We really appreciate your time. Um, again, to all of our attendees, we will be sending a follow-up email with the deck. Um, and please feel free to reach out if you have further questions or would like to chat more with Srini. We are available here at CompuNL Digital to answer your data catalog needs. Um, Srini, any last words before we wrap up today? Yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for joining this webinar and make it so successful. I hope uh, it is definitely useful for you. You might have get some information out of it. And if you have any questions, you can send them to our marketing and sales teams as well we will answer them if somebody is not able to answer, uh, answer right now or not able to post right now and uh, i'm so happy to answer that questions as well and thanks one and all and thanks very much uh, rachel for uh, facilitating this thanks absolutely so thank you again um Shrini and everyone have a wonderful rest of your week and uh keep an eye out for our next webinar we have at least five coming up in the next few months so we will keep you all posted Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you.